House of Squibb, manufacturing chemist with the medical profession since 1858, bring you Academy Awards. The pictures, the players, the techniques and skills which have won or been nominated for the coveted awards granted each year by the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences to each in his field for outstanding achievement. The House of Squibb, makers of the great family of Squibb medicinal products, brings you the distinguished Paramount star Brian Donlevy in The Great McGinty, the original screenplay for which Preston Sturgis won his 1940 Academy Award. This is the story of a guy called McGinty who's pen and bar on a joint south of the border. This is the story of McGinty, his friends, and their brief day of glory. Well, here we are. And if your eyes can see through the cigarette smoke, I'll point out our interesting characters. Oh, yeah, those uh, tough deadpan-looking mugs at the table playing poker. Open. Get it up. That's the boss. Used to be a big shot political boss up north. I'm in, boss. That's Louie. He carries a rod under his arm and nothing under his cap. I'm in too, boss. That's the politician. And over here, the pale-faced young man staring into his drink, his name is Thompson. He's new down here and very sad. Where's the door to the patio? Right behind that potted palm. And behind the bar... Watch this bar for me, Pedro. I got a hunch about that guy, Thompson. The great McGinty himself about to go into action. Shall we join McGinty in the patio? Hey, you, give me that gun. No, don't. Let me alone. Give me it. I don't want to live anymore. Shut up. Come on out of here. Uh, Don't you? You're breaking my arm. Well, are you coming peaceful? All right. Why did you have to stop me? Why didn't you let me do it? Here, have a drink. Thanks. Hey, what's the matter with you, kid? What do you want to pull a gun on yourself for? I hadn't any right to go on living. Nuts. What did you do? I was the cashier of a bank up in Montclair, New Jersey. So what? I had a nice house, nice wife, nice kids. And I stole $25,000 from the bank. Oh, I don't deserve to live. <laughs> you was a cashier of a bank and you stole only 25000 bucks. <laughs> hey, get a load of this guy. And he wants to shoot himself. Well, what did you ever do, McGinty? What did I do? I'll tell you. I was the governor of a state. You governor of a state? How could you ever have been a governor? Well, how do you get to be anything? You got to start at the bottom, and that's where I started. I got into town under a freight car. It's snowing, and I'm cold and beat, and I ain't been eating for two days, and I'm in a soup kitchen inhaling some broth when the politician ups to me. Good soup, huh? Take me kind of the mayor to think of the less fortunate on a night like this. Never ain't mind it? the applesauce, boo. Yeah. How'd you like to make a couple of bucks? What do you think you're kidding? What have I got to do? Very simple, my boy. You just go down and vote for Mayor Tillinghast and come right back here and collect two bucks. How about voting twice? That's four bucks. What's the jail sentence for repeating? Who said anything about repeating? Where do you think this is? Hicks Corners? Some people is too lazy to vote, that's all. They don't like this kind of weather. Some of them is sick in bed and can't vote. Maybe a couple of them croaked recently. That ain't no reason why Mayor Tillinghast should be cheated out of their support. All we're doing is getting out the boat. Hey, pipe down, you guys. The boss will be here any second. Now, what was you saying about that bomb? I said that 
bum just voted 37 times and I need the dough to pay him off. I don't believe a man can vote 37 times. I just said he voted 37 times! He couldn't vote 37 times! Who voted 37 times? Oh, uh, good evening, boss. Good evening, Mr. Mayor. That lug there cramming in the free lunch. Pay him off. See, Mayor, the kind of service we're giving you. Hey, you lug. Huh? Come in here. We want to look at you. Me? Yeah, you. Don't you know you ain't supposed to vote more than once? Who are you? A tough guy, huh? I guess you don't know where you are. No. And I don't care, neither. This guy kills me. Ah, he thinks he's me. I didn't know it, but he was the big political boss of the town. I guess he took a liking to me because he gave me some dough and I got a shave and a manicure and I bought me a new suit. Okay, boss. Here's the lug. I uh, got a new suit. Yeah, some suit. Huh? Looks more like this suit got you. Listen, you. Suppose you listen for a change. The reason you're alive and walking around in that horse blanket ain't because I like you, see. It's because I can use some nerve in my business. In the meantime, if you want to do some collecting for me, you got a job. You got 20%. I pay the hospital bill. Give me the list and shut up. Now, look. Your job is to collect for the protection I've been giving you. I'll collect, and when I do, I get 20%, and don't you forget it. <laughs> In here. In here, Mark. You can take it easy now. I've been following you. Me and Louie up there driving. Okay. Move over. You uh, collect anything except that black eye. Here's your dough. Two fifty and five and four hundred. That's eleven hundred and fifty bucks. Count it. So you collect it after all. I guess you think you're kind of hot stuff, huh? Because you beat up a few guys. All right, keep the change. Keep what change? I got 20% coming. I said keep the whole wad. I never expect to collect it anyhow. Hmm? Well, then what's the idea of sending me out? I'm glad you didn't disappoint me. What? For a minute, I thought you was going to say thank you. Me? You're a card, you are. Yesterday, you were a bull on the bread line. Today, you got a thousand berries and a no suit. If you can't keep on like you've started today, there's no telling where you'll be tomorrow. This is a land of great opportunity. Hey, what makes this butt so quiet? You don't hear nothing in here. It's armor. Don't interrupt. And if you think I'm not the boss, you try cross me up sometime. You got me all a tremble. I bet you're scared to death of yourself. All right. You asked for it. Yeah, I'll break your neck. Tired as I am. Yeah, he's where you get yours. <laughs> Yeah. He always was a little muscle-bound. I could beat him to the punch, you know. <laughs> Boy, but we had some Brannigan. I thought you said you were the governor of a state. Sounds like you were just a cheap crook. Well, you gotta crawl before you walk, don't you? I collected the chicken feed for a while, see, and then the guy makes me an alderman, and I move in on the second floor. <laughs> Thought we was cut off. As I was saying, stealing gas is dead as a doornail. We need a new face. Clean, typical American. Upright, dependable. Somebody they don't know too much about. What do you think of McGinty? Huh? Never heard of him, huh? Well, that's just what I'm talking about. <laughs> A hundred thousand dollars. That's what they tell me. But that's a confounded outrage, Mr. Alderman. Even in the days of Boss Herman, we didn't have to pay that much for franchises. Not even in the days of Bathhouse Jake. Well, those boys were pikers compared to this mob. Oh, you don't mean that, Mr. Maxwell. You've got to remember everything's gone up. Living expenses is higher. There's an income tax. Uh... And, well, you're dealing with a better class of men than Bathhouse Jake. Now, look here. I will not pay graft. Meagers for defense, but not one cent for tribute. You could call it advertising. Uh, yes? Come over here. I want to 
talk to you. I got something important. Be right over. Well, I'm sorry, Maxwell, but that's the way it is. Uh, Catherine. Yes, Mr. McGinty? I've got to go over and see the boss. I'll be back about four. All right, Mr. McGinty. Now, just a minute, McGinty. <laughs> You got here, huh? Yeah. Sit down. Have a cigar. Are you kidding? I know them cigars. Listen, you want to be reform mayor. Reform mayor? That's what I said. Well, what do you mean, reform mayor? What do you think it means? Don't make me say everything twice, will you? Well, I said, do you want to be reform mayor of this city? Mayor! Well, what do you got to do with the reform party? I am the reform party. Who do you think? You're the reform party. Why do you make me say everything twice? But since when? It's a long time ago. In this town, I'm all the parties. You think I'm going to starve every time they change administration? Well, then where does the reform party come in? They come in the back door every Wednesday. <laughs> I ask you if you want to be reform mayor. You give me a plain answer. Well, sure, I guess so. Good. You're in. You'll have to kiss a lot of babies, meet a lot of guys, and uh, wear your old clothes. They don't want no dudes after that last one. And though you'll have to get married right away. What do you mean, get married right away? What do you think it means? Do I have to say everything twice? <laughs> Women vote. Maybe they don't know it. They don't like bachelors. Oh, they don't, huh? Well, if they don't like them, they can lump them. What's the matter with you? Are you nuts? No, I'm just playing hard to get. Daniel. Huh? Don't you know what marriage is? Don't you know that marriage has always been the most beautiful, the most beautiful setup between the sexes? <laughs> Don't you know the coat without the pants? Like a pig without a poke. Marriage is the most, the most... Then why don't you try it? Because I ain't running for mayor! Yeah, well, I ain't neither. Poke that in your pig. Before continuing with part two of Academy Award, may we suggest for your enjoyment every day an ever-popular member of the great family of Squib products, pure, refreshing Squib Dental Cream. There's something about its delightful minty flavor that seems to wake up your mouth, to leave it pleasantly cool, clean, refreshed. Look into your mirror, and you will see your own smile with all its natural sparkle revealed. For the active ingredient in pure Squib Dental Cream is one of the safest, softest, yet most effective polishing agents known to dental science. It's just one more reason why you can taste, feel, and see the refreshing difference when you brush your teeth with Squib Dental Cream. Use it regularly for a more attractive smile, a cleaner, happier mouth. Taste, feel, and see the refreshing difference. In just a moment, Brian Donlevy will be back with the second part of The Great McGinty. But first, we want to thank Paramount Pictures for making this story available. You'll be interested to know that you can soon see Brian Don Levy in Paramount's new Technicolor production, The Virginian. And now, part two of the Academy Award winning picture, The Great McGinty. You want another shot of this? Yeah. Well, did you get married? Yeah. Yeah, I made the mistake of talking it over with my secretary first, and then I was a goner. Oh, I'm so happy for you, Mr. McGinty. What are you talking about? I told him to go fly a kite. Can you see me telling some dame where I've been till 2 o'clock in the morning, and, and how did you get that lip rouge on your hat? Oh. Well, I certainly feel the same way you do about it, Mr. McGinty, but mm. you need the woman's vote, and if you had a wife... Um... What I mean to say, Mr. McGinty, is that I've been married before, and, well, I'd be willing to marry you, Mr. McGinty. Huh? Hello, Mr. McGinty's office. Who's calling? Oh, it's for you, Mr. McGinty. Yeah. Oh, what? Tell him I'm dead or something. I, I you got to go into the office and think this over. Careful. <laughs> I 
suppose we're legally married, aren't we? Really married? That's what the guy said. Mr. McGinty, I don't want you to think I've been concealing anything from you. Huh? There's no reason why I should. It's just that in the excitement... What? Sit down, Mr. McGinty. What's on your mind? It's just that... Well, I think you ought to know if we're all going to have to live in the same house. Uh, who's all? Well, I've been meaning to tell you that... Well, I have two of the loveliest little children, and they have the cutest little dog. It's just that I knew you wouldn't mind being mayor and everything. I don't suppose you'll be home very much anyway. got me all right. Being married was a cinch to get elected. And Catherine wasn't a bad wife at all. For any guys, though, even though we didn't work at it for a while, but being mayor was a cinch. But when I got to thinking of being married, that was a lot tougher. Come in. Oh, Bessie, put it on the bed, Bessie. Did you wash out those other stockings? Not yet. Oh. Oh, Mr. McGinty, what are you doing in my room? Well... You know, Catherine, I, uh, I was thinking, why, why don't you, we, have dinner together sometime? Well, I'd be very glad to, Mr. McGinty, any time. <laughs> you know, if you told anybody that we've been living here like this for six months and neither one of us ever give the other one a thought, uh, huh, they wouldn't believe it. That's right. Even if it was true... Wouldn't believe it. Well, it's silly. Yes, it is. I ain't never even kissed you. No, Mr. McGinty. That's silly, isn't it? Yes, Mr. McGinty. Well, what's the use of being silly? I'm your husband, ain't I? Catherine? Oh, They had to get up pretty early to be smarter than Peter Rabbit because he was as full of brains as a dog is full of fleas. Our old friend didn't even stop to think. He took a hop, skip, and a jump and started across the clover field as fat as his little fat legs would carry him. Just as he got to the edge of the field by the old split rail fence, a shadow fell across his path. And who do you suppose it was? I'll give you three guesses, and three more, and three more. But you will never guess who it really was, because it was none other than our old friend... Darling. Huh? The children are asleep now. Oh, oh good. Hey, just a minute till I finish this thing. It <laughs> was none other... Then our friend Muggle D. Wump, the tortoise. Huh. Well, what do you know? That's who I thought it was all the time. Darling, the children love you so and admire you. It hurts sometimes. They think you're George Washington and Abraham Lincoln rolled together. Only finer. Hey, have you been drinking catnip? No, darling. No, I haven't. I know you and I believe in you. You'll be strong enough someday, Dan. And then you'll wash clean of graft and crooks and thieving politicians and really deserve your title. The Honorable. Oh! 
you, Dan. You're strong enough for anything now. Huh? You're governor. Governor of the state. Now you can keep your promise. Look, I, I'm governor. You're the governor's lady now. Everybody don't get to be governor. Isn't that enough for you? Why don't we leave well enough alone? Dan. Oh, Mr. Governor, huh? the reception committee is waiting to see you, sir. Oh, well, show him in. Honey, you go with that guy. Find another room for a while. I'll be with you when I get rid of these bums. Well, 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 we did it, eh, McGinty? What are you doing in here? I'm expecting the reception committee. He's expecting the committee. Listen, punk, you got it. I'm the committee. What a wonderful opportunity, Daniel. The state needs everything. They've had honest governors so long, the whole place is in wreck and ruin. Is that so? Fantastic. The roads, for instance, they're in terrible condition. In case of war, we'd be at the mercy. How could an enemy ever get to here? How do I know? Am I a general? <laughs> now, we'll start off with a new state capitol building. Maybe white marble. Or do you like pink? What do we need it for? Need it for? This one's got a crack in it. I like it. And I got to live in it. What are you trying to pull, Log? Look, there ain't going to be no dams and no bridges and no buildings the people don't need from now on. The people? <laughs> Say, are you sick or something? I feel fine. And what are you trying to put over your cheap double-crossing rat? After I spend 400 grand to put you in here. Look, here's the key to my safety deposit box. I'll pay you the rest out of my salary. What's all this talk? You're spouting like a woman. Aha, uh -huh, your wife, the cheesecake, you marry. Leave her out of this. Oh. There, I told you. You skunk. You double-crossing skunk. I'll give it to you for this. Oh, no, you don't. I'll push your skull. Hit me with a chair, will you? Yes, I will. Let you have it. Governor, Mr. Governor, where are you? Oh, there he is, under the table on top of the big guy. Was on top. <laughs> Yeah. I'm afraid I've got bad news for you, Governor. You're under arrest. Put him in cell number six, right next to the other one. Oh, boy, that turned out to be something. I said he tried to kill me. He said I tried to kill him. He said I was a crook. I said he was... Well, anyway, <laughs> there we were, sitting on the hot seat in the cooler, side by side. Oh, Dan, I'll stand by you. I'll fight for you night and day. We'll lick them if it takes 20 years. Sure, sure. Thanks for trying, honey. Well, good night, Dan. Good night, honey. And don't you worry about me. You're still here. Who asked you anything? I hope you're satisfied, you rat. The first time I catch you alone, I'll bet your brains all over the yard. You and your little brother. Hey, yeah. how about no quiet down there? Why don't you shut up? Shut up your own trap. Stick a cork in it. Yeah. Jesus, the guard's coming. Hey, 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 quiet in there. Who do you think you are, you guys? Holy smoke, it's the politician. How did he get in that suit? Shut up. What's the big idea? Any more noise and I'll put you both in solitary. I got all the keys right here, and it'll be very simple. He's got the key. You said it. Now be quiet! <laughs> Wait till it gets dark, if you want to yell. Come on, come on, Lord. You want we should get caught now after the politicians sprung us? They've got us his car on an hour side. I'll be right with you, horse face. Just let me finish this phone call. Catherine, I I can't talk much. I got two mugs waiting for me. I, I couldn't stay in the jug. It wouldn't look right for you to have to tell the kids. I, uh, I think you're wonderful, honey. And I wanted to tell you I left you a key to the deposit box. There's something there I held out on you. Uh, so long, honey. Come on. We got a boat to catch. I got to hang up, darling. I, I'm sorry it didn't work out, but... 
You can't make a silk purse out of a pig's ear. Uh, kiss, kiss the kids for me, will you? Come on, I said! <laughs> Why didn't he kill you? I never could figure that out. Yeah. Maybe it's because you're a big liar and what you told me never happened at all. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, have it your own way, kid. And that'll be two bucks for the drink. Thanks. I saw you. You laughed. Saw me what, pig face? Don't make me say everything twice. So you put those two bucks in your pocket and ring up no sale. I'm going to teach you once and for all, to be honest. Yeah? Get your ham hand off my bar. You asked for it? Come on! So did you, and here's where you get it. Hey, it's so quiet in here. Nothing but that music. What's going on at the bar? Uh, nothing much, Louie. McGinney and the boss are at it again. <laughs> Boys will be boys. Uh, I got four aces. What do you got, politician? Not bad. I got five kings. Sorry, Louis. If you will look at any squib product, you will see that every package bears a control number. That number is the symbol of a painstaking way of working that safeguards every step in the production of every squib product. Every date, every test that is made, from the day raw materials arrive at squib to the day the finished product is in your hands, is recorded by the squib control number. It identifies every laboratory worker and every scientist involved in the making of a squib product. It helps to eliminate the risk of human error in all squib products, from life-saving drugs to pure squib dental cream. For no squib product is released until every detail of its history has been entered in its control record. It's just one more evidence of the quest for perfection that never ceases in the house of squib. One more reason why squib is a name you can trust. Next week, another great picture. The House of Squib will present Academy Award with a treat for the entire family. A special treat for the children. Walt Disney's delightful fantasy, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. <laughs> Paramount's The Great McGinty was written for radio by Frank Wilson with an original musical score composed and conducted by Leif Stevens. Our producer-director is D. Engelbach. Paramount's current release is Kitty, starring Paulette Goddard and Ray Milan. This is Hugh Brundage bidding you good night until next week at the same time when you are invited to listen again to Academy Award, presented by the House of Squibb, a name you can trust. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>